Hey guys, hope you have an amazing day so far. In this video, I'm going to show you the exact framework what we use to unblock Google Merchant Center for dropshipping as well as for our other e-commerce clients. Uh, in the results, you see here that we turned 47 into 150K for one of our dropshipping clients. He had some issues with Google Merchant Center before, which we were able to solve with the knowledge that I've written down in this document. So let's not waste any time and let's dive right into the knowledge. Um, this, this framework basically contains two steps. The first step is to prepare the information in your merchant center and the other step is to provide the right information on a website to get your merchant center approved. But remember, before we start into the checklist, one thing, Google wants happy users. So it all comes down to the information you provide to the merchant center that needs to be on your website as well. So it basically match and tells the customer the same information. So if we go to step number one, these are the elements you need to have in place in order to get your merchant center approved. First of all, you go to the gear icon here and uh, go to the returns tab right here. So you need to copy and paste your um, return and shipping page URL right here, which is going to take you just a minute to uh, get done. Second of all, you need to have uh, do the right the same thing for your delivery as well. So you go to the gear icon, you go to delivery and you implement your shipping speed there. So it's not an issue that you have a bit of longer shipping time, uh, but the only thing that matter is that your information on the website matches what, what you're going to provide in the Google Merchant Center. So if it's between five or 12 days, it's not an issue. It just needs to be the same information on both platforms. The other thing you need to have in place is the right company information. Uh, as you can see here, you just need to go to the gear icon, you go to business information and you provide as much business information as possible. So a little hack what we always do uh, in the footer, we use the exact same order as you see here, um, which contains the address line, the city, the state and the postal code. And that is the same uh, order as you can see here. So the algorithm is able to detect this information easier from your website and get your merchant center uh, approved much faster than if you don't do it. So step number two is the requirements for your website. What do you need to have in place to get your merchant center approved? Um, so these are the elements you need to have on your website. So first of all, you need to uh, synchronize your product feed um, with the Shopify uh, application called YouTube uh, and Google. So you install that, you connect your Gmail address and that's all done. Then you need to provide some basic information inside this app about your products. Well, um, what basically contains the product title, the prices, the currency, the GTIN, if possible, the description and any color of, or sizes. So as much product features as possible. And this gives you also competitive advantage against your competitors, because the more information you provide Google, the better they can optimize the algorithm to show your products in front of the competition. Uh, the other things you need to remember right here to solve the merchant center issue uh, are these four elements. First of all, you don't need to use over promising language. So if you basically say that your product solves an X or a big problem uh, and it's not true, uh, Google will detect it and ban your merchant center. The other thing what you don't need to do is place any badges or logo from news website to build fake trust. Uh, because Google will detect that you are a new website. So it's basically not possible that you are features in big magazines and they know that you are lying. So don't do it in order to get your merchant center approved. The other thing, step number three is don't show uh, fake before and after results. Uh, for example, in the medical or the beauty needs because Google detects that it's fake and maybe photoshopped. So just don't do it. The other and last thing is don't make false statements. Uh, this is basically true for the medical and the beauty uh, things. Don't make statements which your product or service cannot do in order to get your merchant center uh, approved. The other things you need to have in place uh, for the website information is this checklist. Uh, this is my five years of e-commerce knowledge. So uh, let's take this serious in order to get your merchant center approved ASAP. So the first of all, you need to have the company information in your footer, which I just explained in the right format. Uh, second of all, you need to have a contact page in place with the same address uh, as in the business details in the merchant center. And you need to have at least two contact options on the contact page. So you can either have a contact field or an email address. 
uh, and we always do the address uh, from your business as a bonus we have three so that's more than the minimum and it's better to get your merchant center uh, approved the other things you need to remember is check your desktop and mobile menu because uh, it's not allowed to show two times the same element or the same link in there. So just double check this issue. Uh, the other thing you need to uh, remember, which is going to help you approve your merchant center is don't use any double links for, to a landing page. So let's say you have a home page and you have multiple buttons in there. Uh, it's not suggested that if people click on this button that they go to the same landing page. So avoid using the same URL for multiple buttons. Uh, the other thing you need to have in place is the legal pages. Uh, make sure you have a terms of service page, a shipping and return page, uh, and a contact page at least, and a privacy policy. So you have the basic requirements in place. So if it's possible, uh, mostly on WooCommerce, but on Shopify as well, you need to show these legal pages inside the checkout so people know that they are buying from you with the right information in their hands in the checkout uh, page. The other thing you need to uh, mention in the checkout page is the shipping information. So here again, your information in the merchant center need to match with the information on your website. So if you have free shipping or paid shipping in both ways, you need to mention it in the merchant center as well as in your checkout. So they double check it always. Uh, the other thing you need to have an HTTPS certificate. So that basically means that uh, the traffic is uh, secure from the website. Um, the other thing you need to know is that 90% of users nowadays on the internet comes on mobile. So Google checks if the mobile, if your uh, website is mobile friendly. So make sure that's uh, nice. And the other need, uh, thing you need to know is um, you don't need to use any filler images. So sometimes when you have a template, they have a uh, filler image with the sizing requirements there. So you need to make sure that you remove this one and replace with your own images because they will basically detect that uh, you have these filler images and then you will get your merchant center account, account not approved. So these are basically the things you need to have in place to avoid 95% of all issues from your merchant center. And if you want any more uh, e-commerce advice, go to my YouTube channel right here. I share as much of my five years e-commerce knowledge as possible. So make sure you learn as much from me as you can. And if you have any other questions, you can reach out to me. Just send me a DM on Twitter and we will talk ecom. So for now, with that being said, I hope you have an amazing day and I hope that your merchant center get approved as soon as possible. My name is Robin and I see you soon.